what are you seeing out of Brock Purdy the last three weeks that is the outlier, or or are we seeing him return to just a quarterbacking mean? Dan, what do you got for me here? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, I'll go back to the Minnesota game. I actually thought he played well in Minnesota. Outside the the, the two late interceptions, Rich, and I kind of showed this. The first interception. He just throws the ball so soon. It's the same. He completes the very same pass in that game earlier to Jennings, but it's to his right. And he throws it. And this, the, the, the overarching thing for me is what made him so intriguing and unique was he was throwing the ball so early with such rare anticipation and not giving it away to the other team. That was, that's what was rare. You know, can you anticipate and be accurate? And he was doing that. That is a rare trait. And so he was, and it was, it was marvelous to see. If you remember, close your eyes and think of that big in route he threw to Debo against the Dallas Cowboys. Like that's the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so go back to the Minnesota game and he throws one to Juwan Jennings on an in, like a little bit of a post in and it's thrown so crazy early. You're like, my gosh, that's beautiful. He does the same thing later in the game and he just misses it because he throws it so early. I think the thing with him is this, the concerning thing that for, for jo- for Kyle Shannon has to be that over the last three weeks, there's been too many passes that have been touched by the defense, whether they've all been intercepted or some have been tipped away. Like Logan Wilson dropped one the other day on almost the same one he caught the other day. Um, so in the Pratt interception, I think that's more of a great play by Pratt than it is a, Oh my gosh, Brock Purdy stinks. So, they, they've got to kind of see some of the anticipation stuff that's happening and, and kind of um, why defenders, you know, are, are doing a little bit. This is kind of what happened to Tua a little bit against Buffalo and, excuse me, Philly is defenders are kind of early in the down just getting to their landmarks. They're not necessarily paying attention to where he's looking. They're not paying attention to some of the underneath stuff. If the landmark tells you in cover three or cover two to get to a certain location, no matter what the quarterback is doing, get to your landmark early in the down and then drive on his eyes late in the down. And I think that's happening a little bit. Um, I also think Lou Anarumo was unbelievable game plan wise against Kyle, you know, and I love Kyle, but Lou Anarumo, you know, out coached in that game. So um, there, there's a, there's a, a, a medium point between, you know, kind of what we've seen out of Brock and kind of probably who he was in the first 10 or 12 games. Yeah, I know four, six and two teams in the AFC, Dan, and, um, and we're calling a game we're featuring two of them in Germany on Sunday. And it feels like the Bengals have finally arrived on the scene though, raising their hands mm. saying, don't forget about us. Six and two teams. Like that's the guy that we saw last two years in Burrow, And that's the defense. That's everything, right? Like there it was. <laughs> In San Francisco. And that's the scary. That's the scary. You know, if you, you like, if you're the AFC, you're going, oh my gosh, they, they, they got out of it, you know, because yeah. the injury happens and, you know, start of the season and everyone's like, oh, the Bengals are done. And you, you sit there and go like, you just, I, re- I called their Monday night football game against the Rams, you know, Rich. And I was like, dude, they just have to find a way to get to their bye week three and three and get him healthy. I don't care what it looks like. I, I just find a way. And I think about the game against Seattle two weeks ago and the red zone stop that the defense makes and they get to three and three and you saw a couple plays. You're like, all right, he doesn't look that hurt anymore. And you're like, he gets to the bye and just go and watch out. Cause you knew this is the best offensive line he's had in, in Cincinnati. Orlando Brown's been awesome. Okay. So like best offensive line he's had. And you know that if he just gets healthy, the four or five plays he makes a game with his legs are everything. They put him under center a little bit last week. They could not be. And Rich, that calf injury not only affected him, it affected everyone. The offensive line. I mean, imagine how hard it is to play offensive line when everyone knows where the quarterback's going to be all the time. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 